First down and goal, Oregon, UCLA, four-yard line. Lavelle carries the ball. He will not get back to the line of scrimmage. It was a very slow developing play. And I know that my partner, Bob Greasy, frets terribly over such things because he believes so deeply you got to be quick, quick, quick in that neighborhood. Inside the 10-yard line, you cannot do anything that's developing very slowly, especially against a team with so much speed and quickness on defense, such as UCLA. They were across the line of scrimmage before he even got the football. And Oregon has spent its last time out. You've got to put the ball, you've got to throw the ball in the end zone, uh, I would think, one time here, don't you? Well, you have 20 seconds left. You've got if two you, plays. If you throw it. the ball and it's incomplete, you can do it again. Throw it into the end zone, and if it's incomplete again, then you can kick the, the field goal. But right. if you throw it and incomplete, or if you throw it and complete it in the end zone, you should have at least two plays trying to get the touchdown. Only 20 seconds remaining. And Sam Archer comes in. Next week, we'll have Southern California down at Tempe against Arizona State, which is a team that's been getting better and better every week. Or it'll be Michigan State, Indiana in the Big Ten. Second down goal. Ball at the UCLA six now. And Bruins lead it 3-0. Ball is knocked away by Chance Johnson, number seven, and intended for Archer on just a straight slant. And uh, Archer was pretty well covered by the defensive back, but Johnson got the ball before it got anywhere near him. Yeah, there was no flare control on Johnson, number seven. Well, he was a former defensive <laughs> back in high school. He should have made a better play on that one. Yeah, but Ar <laughs> Archer got mugged in the end zone. <laughs> yeah. You see that? Chance Johnson, an outstanding linebacker. Now he's out of the shadow of Ken Norton, who was an outstanding player for the Bruins last year. 17 seconds to go. Third down and goal. You've got to throw it here. Out of the shotgun. Pressure coming. Pass away. Incomplete. Pass intended for Joe Reitzuk. It was Joe Reitzuk last week that went up on the back base, back of the end zone for a two-point conversion. Caught the pass all right, but it stepped out of bounds. UCLA is blitzing Mayor number 92 and Johnson. UCLA just dominated the series inside the 10-yard line. Not a good series offensively for Oregon. And UCLA defensively with a very good series. Got a chance to tie it right here, though, with Kirk Dennis on a 23-yard field goal try. That hold it. Brothers, kick is up by Dennis. And the kick is good. So Brothers got it down. And at nine seconds to go in the first half, this game is tied at three. Little more out of it than that. But even so, the Oregon Ducks are going to go to the clubhouse probably even with the team that just last week was ranked number one in the nation. Terry Donahue's got to be concerned about his ball club coming on the road after that big loss and not doing any better offensively in the first half. They squib it down the field, and they let it go out of bounds. So they'll back up five yards and kick it again. No time off the clock. Still nine seconds to go in the first half. Terry Donahue, the winningest coach in UCLA history. Doesn't look too happy at this point. Well, it just you just sense uh, that the team has lost a little pop. Well, Oregon is a very strong defensive ball club. We, we mentioned that, and especially against the pass. UCLA has tried to get some things going on the ground, but they have gotten no consistency, and their field position has not been very good. They've started inside their own 25-yard line on all five possessions. Wind is, keeps knocking the ball off the tee. So it's picked up a little bit here in the last uh, 15, 20 minutes. Still, though, looks like we might escape the rain. Down 
the middle with it this time. Big high bounce and accepted on the run by Sean Wills. Looking to bounce to the outside. Gets up to the 42. And the clock shows three seconds. So they got one play. For ABC's NFL Monday Night Football, we'll have Bernie Kosar, the Cleveland Browns. Against Warren Moon and the Houston Oilers. 9 o'clock Eastern Time Monday here on ABC Sports. Those two are in the AFC Central Division. And that Houston has been something to watch lately. And the LA Bruins to kick off. Normally the kicking off is done by Kirk Maggio. But now you've got uh, Alfredo out there to do it. With Chris Oldham and Latin Berry to see people. Mike Adamley is going to introduce you to one of the living legends in this part of the country, one of the folk heroes in the history of University of Oregon football, one of my favorite people. Velasco pops it up, and they'll let it go. Oh, they don't let it go out of bounds. Lattenberry went back and picked it up, and he'd have been better off. Maybe the ball wasn't going to go out of bounds. Maybe it started to come back, and Latin had to make the play. Right now, let's join Mike Adamley. Well, Keith, the man you were mentioning, synonymous with football here in the state of Oregon, the University of Oregon, Len Casanova, 16 years as head coach, winningest coach of all time, later athletic director, now athletic director emeritus. Great day for Duck football, a good game, two great coaches, two great schools. Certainly is, Mike. I, 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 it's a, been a very, very fine first half, a great defensive effort on both teams, and I think it'll be the most interesting game out in the second half, too. It's good to see you again, and then uh, this is my first opportunity to meet and chat with you. I know you had a chance to have dinner with Keith Jackson. What about the future of this football program? I think uh, with our president athletic director, Bill Byrne, and our president coaching staff, the Rich Brooks, we're, we're coming up in there, and we're going to be a contender all the time. Nice to be on national TV, too. Yeah, well, we like that. <laughs> we haven't been there for a little while, but... Uh, I'm glad we're on at this particular time. Go Ducks, go. Glad to see you, Len. Thank, Thank you, Mike. Stopping by and Thank you. Thank you. Keep. Thank you, Mike. The ball rests just short of the 30-yard line. And it's about second and five for the Oregon Ducks. Rich Brooks is a coach that always has some gimmicks up his sleeve. We haven't seen any yet today. There's going to be a loss on that play of about a yard as Lattenberry carried it. And the linebackers rode him down for the loss. First half stats, Oregon dominated the second half, running 22 plays, second quarter running 22 plays to 11 to catch up in that category. UCLA with only 126 yards of total offense. They're averaging 477 for a game. It's now a very long five, close to six, as Pete Nelson drops straight back. Gets pretty good protection, goes underneath with it. Not enough for the first down. They got him just short. He had to go just past the 34, and Craig Davis, Dex, Archer, just inside the 34. Turned around, didn't he? Turned around. Right into front is Milburn. Back to receive Henley. Henley hasn't had a chance to run today. High, good kick. And Darrell Fair catches back at the 25. Oh, so we'll see the Bruins with their first second half possession in just a moment. Position was very much a part of the UCLA story in the first half, and they start this time at their own 25. And Aikman pitches to Brian Brown, and Brian got a heck of a block from Mark Estrick. I mean, he pancaked one of the Ducks, but uh, Brian still couldn't turn it upfield and do much with it. Derek Horton, the strong safety, was the one that got the lick from the Bruin fullback. And you got a UCLA man hurt on the play, one of the offensive linemen has called time. And note down, so there was a, it's Page shaken up on the play. So you got time out for a moment for him. You know, when uh, visiting with Len Casanova the other night, remembering some of the people who that uh, have played football after the University of Oregon. Here, but you got so many of them. Of course, you go back to Jim Aiken's time when Ron, uh, Norm Van Brocklin, of course, played here. You had Jack Patera, 
Mel Renfro, Tim Stokes, George Shaw, Jim Shanley, Mel Chris Miller is now active. Woodley Lewis going back to 1949. George Martin with the Giants uh, played here. George was was a starter on both the basketball team and the football team here. How about Dan Fouts? Dan Fouts. Bobby Moore. Goes on and on. Now, now known as Ahmad Rashad. Still holds Willie a lot West. of records. Dave Wilcox. Gus Francis. Pass incomplete. Troy Aikman looking upfield to David Keating. And couldn't get it. Keith, we showed that graphic of where UCLA started their uh, possessions in the first half, and all of them were inside their own 25-yard line. 27 of the 37 touchdown drives this year have been greater than 60 yards, and when you have to go that far to make touchdowns, uh, it's very tough on your offense. One of the problems is their defense is not turning the ball over for their offense nearly as much this year as they did last year. As I mentioned, their defense is last in takeaways in the Pac-10. Oregon shows blitz on the shotgun. Third down and 10. And Matt Brock was in the backfield. He points at one of the UCLA linemen, and let's see whether or not uh, we did have some movement. Minifield might have moved. Just depends on whether or not they saw it. Offside, Oregon. David Cusano walking around trying to help Matt Brock argue the case. Dead ball. They lost. Encroachment. Defense. Still third Still down. Third down. I think Rich Brooks thought he saw movement as well. well. What happened was one of the offensive linemen for UCLA didn't move his feet but pointed. He just going to point to somebody. See if he can catch him pointing. On, that, on the left side, the, the Oregon man had already jumped off sides at that point. Yeah. So it's third and five. They get after Aikman, but he gets away. He's going for the first down, and he's got it. And he dives, gets to the ground, avoiding the contact. And everybody who is fond of the Oregon Ducks wishes to goodness that Bill Musgrave had been able to do that last week and not wound up with a broken collarbone. But Troy runs it all the way out to the 46-yard line, and a first down for the Bruins. It's a 3-3 tie, and that is the longest UCLA running play of the ball game, 16 yards. First down pass coming up, pressure, he got away again, he got away from the glitching linebacker, and he's knocked out of bounds just across midfield. He got away from Scott Kozak. I mean, old Scott had him right in his sights. But Aikman is not an All-American and a Heisman candidate for nothing. He's a good athlete. Well, Kozak is a good athlete also. He's nominated for the Butkus Award. Emblematic of the best linebacker in the country. That time Aikman saw him coming at the last minute and just dodged him and got out of the way. Ball is marked just short of midfield. We're in his second down and seven for UCLA. 3-3 three, three tie, mind you, in the third quarter. This is Brian Brown. Down he goes. Pierce hit laid on him by Peter Brantley. Right outside backer for Oregon. A UCLA tidbit, uh, Bobby. It's third down. And seven. Here comes Keating into the ball game now. Probably bringing a play. Brantley is playing because of the injury, the early season injury, to Mike Blakey, who was a senior, an outstanding linebacker on the other side from Kozak. He's missed the entire year. Far in motion, Aikman back. Rolls to the open side of the field, finds some no, no room this time. Number 92, Matt Brock. At him for the ankle. So the Oregon defensive people, after letting Aikman get away one time for a first down, shut him down and will force the punt. Well, they've done an outstanding job. Aikman throwing for only 81 yards in the first half. He's averaging over 300 for the game, the last four games. Mark Gates, the punter. Didn't get much of it. And it takes a sideways bounce and is going to go out of bounds down around the Oregon 15-yard line. 10.23 to go, third quarter, a 35-yard punt. 
far as track and field is concerned, Hayward Field. The Olympic trials conducted there in 72, 76, and 80, and a whole lot of records set in that stadium. All right. Oregon goes to work just outside their 15. Nelson, a little quick pop. Trying to shake Obi over here into a one-on-one, -on -one, but Henley won't have it and brings him down, and here's Mike Adams. Well, Keith, there's no question that the Oregon defense has done an outstanding job today, but another factor to consider is the crowd. The noise has been very loud here inside of Austin Stadium. As a matter of fact, Terry Donahue at halftime decided to dispatch of, dispose of their audible system because Troy Aikman was having trouble hearing, so were the rest of the players, so they're just going to go bread and butter stuff and, and block, period block, forget the audibles, it was disrupting their rhythm. Second down and two. Thank you, Mike. A little bit of a delay out of the backfield, and it uh, looks like a first down as Lavelle carries. There's another thing that's impacted UCLA's offense, the fact that Eric Ball, perhaps, is out. In fact, he's out for the rest of the day with a sprained ankle. They don't have him. Sean Wills, we have not seen so far. Interesting with Mike Adam, we were saying about the uh, the crowd noise. There's only about 40, a little around 40,000 here in the stadium, but the with the stands, the fans are so close to the field. We were commenting before the game, Keith, that I imagine it would be hard to hear uh, if you got some vocal fans in this crowd. All right, Pete Nelson trying to get something going here. Picks up the first down, gets his pass off, pass incomplete, intended for Sam Archer and Daryl Hendley defending for UCLA. The New York City Marathon coming up tomorrow, 10.30 Eastern Time. You're on an intimate 23,000 people. <laughs> Cooey. We'll have it for you live tomorrow here on ABC Sports. Second down and ten. That's Obi going in motion. They'll run it. And get a couple of yards on Lovell's carry. I'm sitting here. I, I, I think once Oregon gets back in good field position, you're going to see something different. They're not going to mess around with gimmick stuff down here, obviously, because of... Well, I think that Rich Brooks has got to be happy with the way things are going right now, too. Uh, yep, I would think so. Yeah, the man most worried right now has got to be Terry Donahue. <laughs> On third and eight, bingo. Big Jim Waller. <laughs> Waller is going to twist. Watch 49 to the right. Patton is going to go first. Well, they're going to go second. And Patton's going to go around Waller. That creates some blocking problems up front for the offensive line. Call that a little twist. And that time the twist worked. Wilcox coming up. I mean, uh, Waller coming up with his fourth sack of the year. And his fourth down back at the 21. And nobody's in the punt. Henley deep. UCLA should get good field position out of this. At the 41, Henley's going to go with it. And he puts it over on the Oregon side of the field. A 13-yard return after a 39-yard punt. And it's UCLA first down at the Oregon 47. Still position to start a possession in the game. And it's on the Oregon 47, and Aikman goes quickly to the air, intended for Mike Farr, and number 10, stretching across, Derek Horton looked to get a little piece of it. Now, Chris Oldham, who is a very aggressive quarterback on the wide side of the field, they may nibble at him here, huh? He's had four interceptions on the year. Has a lot of speed. He's the man that earlier in the ball game uh, had a... Punt, uh, kickoff return. As we mentioned, he's he's second in the NCAA in punt returns. But he is aggressive. They got Brown coming this way. They got Farr on this side, and they go down the middle with it. And the pass is incomplete. Intended for Brown, and Brown took a lick from Peter Brentley. Well, apparently Oldham is not committing 
and making his step forward, which, uh, of course, they haven't run a pattern really deep on that side as yet. Well, what, what Oregon is doing, they've got a robber. They're, they know that UCLA likes a lot of delays with their tight end and their wide receivers coming over. They're allowing somebody to hang around in the middle of the field looking for those delays, and it's been very successful today. Third and ten. Blitz down the middle. Arbuckle fighting for the marker. Aikman picked the blitz, hit his tight end, and he's close to a first down. Oregon this time mixing it up. Three linebackers. We'll watch all three of them come. Arbuckle is here. Aikman is going to see it and pop him with the football to pick up the first down. Sees it. Three-step drop. That's why Aikman is so tough. Keith. Didn't get it though, Bob. He's about a half a yard short. Oh, okay. And they're going on fourth down. Aikman sneak. And that appears to be just enough. He just got on Cornish's back and rode Frank. And it looks like he's got his first down. You see, the defensive front, the three guys are Brock 265, Pisano 255, and Taylor 240. They're really not that big. They are not that big. It's the, it's the scheme that is so tough. The scheme of Denny Schuler, the defensive coordinator, and the package, the nickel package, and the things that he does with it. Getting five and six defensive backs in there, blitzing some of the time, doubling anybody that he wants to. It's been very tough on UCLA today and last year. First down at the 37. Brown with it. Down to about the 33. Ball popped out, but it long since uh, the whistles have stopped it. Look at Wyoming rolling it up against UTEP. Michigan, Minnesota. And there are the big news of the Big Ten today. With Illinois beating Indiana very late in the ball game, too. You know, I, I, it's a shock that Indiana would lose, but I think it's also a surprise that Illinois has done so well yeah. this year under new coach John McAvitt. Second down and seven now as Aikman picks a three-step drop, throws outside the far, and far fights and fights and gets down near the 27, and that's a couple of yards short of the first down. There's a look at Oldham and Farr out on the flank. Oldham giving him plenty of room. Farr says, I'll just take it in front of you. Far came into the game with at least four receptions in six straight games. And he has that again today. He has his five. It looks like, Bob, that Chris Oldham has been instructed well. Don't be too eager. Yeah. Don't let him get behind you. Option down the line, Aikman. And he's got a first down. It was third and about two, and Troy turns it upfield and gets to the 23 of Oregon. Well, Troy Aikman was in Oklahoma for a while. He ought to know how to run the option a little bit. Alabama's still trying to uh, beat LSU, aren't they? And look at this. Georgia came bounding back, wasn't it? Virginia won, Bob. Yes, sir. And Scott got something to celebrate tonight. On first down from the 23, pitch it back to Brian Brown, who finds daylight in the middle and goes inside the 15. Well, during the timeout, before we saw UCLA start this possession at the 47, you said that kind of field position is like a slap in the face. It'll wake you up. You know, when you're pinned back offensively, back in your own territory all day long, you're wondering, when am I ever going to get out of this and get some uh, good field position? Well, UCLA got on the Oregon side for the first time in the ball game, and they're making some something happen. Second down at about two. Brown again. He'll have the first down. Devin Fitzpatrick. Number 99 is now in that defensive alignment for the Oregon Ducks. And number 90, Matt LeBounty, is coming back on the field. 
Houston gets a play Wyoming, though. Keep that in mind. Well, they score 80 points uh, a few weeks ago against yep. Tulsa or somebody. That run and shoot. It was Tulsa, yeah. First down from the 12. Stay with the ground game. Brown spins to the 10. He'll stop there. One, two, three, four ducks on that tackle. They do swarm to the ball, don't they? All right, Brendan McCracken, former quarterback, comes in at wide out and far leads for UCLA. And it's second down from the 10. Aikman still got it. And run out of bounds, short of the line of scrimmage. I understand we're having some video troubles to the east. Obviously, the people are trying to fix it. Tried to play action to get the ball to Arbuckle into the end zone, but he was jammed at the line of scrimmage. It's a big third down play right here for UCLA. Ball is on the 11 of Oregon. It is a 3-3 tie at 3.47 to play in the third quarter. Aikman left. Throws to the end zone. Touchdown, David Keating. Well, he flooded that area and picked out a man. And the fact that he was outside the pocket. Keating is right here. He's just going to go into the end zone and then come back. The fact that Aikman was outside the pocket gave him enough time for Keating to do this. Aikman gets outside, plenty of time. He goes in, good coverage. The corner just stays there. And we have our first touchdown of the ball game. And Velasco's extra point is good. At 3.41 to go in the third quarter, UCLA 10, Oregon 3. All right, this is Chris Oldham returning the ball for the Oregon Ducks. He gets up across the 25 and to about the 26 or 7. UCLA getting the touchdown. The lead 10 to 3 now. But you won't see Rich Brooks change much, I don't think, at this point. It's going to get wild. I think uh, young Nelson has probably gained confidence steadily as the game has worn along. Well, he's not been uh, dominant by any stretch of the imagination, but he, he's not made a big mistake that has cost his team any points either. Passes away, got a man, Sam Archer. Archer hit just hard enough. Just hard enough to knock him out of bounds by Marcus Turner. Otherwise, he would still be running. That was close. It's a good call. With play action this way, the corner is going to allow the receiver inside, and he's going to go back to the outside. It'd be a nice, uh, nice throw and a good design, well-designed play on first down. Now, there's nobody behind Henry. Nobody. But Archer couldn't handle it. And... Stepped out of bounds. First down, Oregon, UCLA, 48. Obi in motion. And this is Lavelle to the 44. No. For a moment. You know, Bob, looking for a moment. And going back to that uh, pass play. That uh, both coaches look to me like today that they're just nibbling and teasing and teasing and teasing and sooner or later <laughs> kids yeah. go to come, you know? UCLA's defensive style has been more of a uh, take away the big play this year and not as aggressive. Has a quick little pop that'll work for the first down to the UCLA 35-yard line with OB making the catch. Washington, Arizona locked up in a defensive struggle. Colorado, pretty good football team. Bill McCartney's got down there. He 
near the 35. First down, Ducks. Nelson gives it to his tailback. And Lavelle gets fairly decent yardage on a first down carry. Close to five. All right, now, remember a week ago in the third and late in the third and the fourth quarter, Washington State started picking up five and six yards on first down rushes. UCLA defensively did not play well in the second half of that game. They have played very well this half, the first half. In fact, it's the best half of football they've played all year. Second down and six. There goes the tailback again. Big hole in the middle, and he's going to have the first down. That's Russell Lawson, a sophomore out of Concord, California. He can handle the nose tackle in the middle. Good things will happen. Waller, 66 in the white jersey. That's Sunia. The right guard is going to come down and block on him. 73 is Koopsman. Gets a nice block on the other linebacker, Craig. That was a huge hole in the center of the line. They don't give him his first down. It'll be third down and about a foot. Lawson started wide on third and short and he's kind of fortunate that he was able to get as much out of it as he did. Now it depends on the mark. And the crowd is hooting because they don't think they got a very liberal mark. They'll have to measure. You'll hear him growl uh, <laughs> if that's not a first down. It is. Usually around this area of the field UCLA becomes aggressive defensively and may come with their linebackers maybe a safety Matt Darby to try and get you out of field goal range especially if you've driven a good distance down the field which Oregon has first down just short of the Bruin 25 10-3 UCLA leads less than a minute now to go in the third quarter Nelson back blitz is on gets away Gets his pass off into the end zone for the tight end. Merton's incomplete. He had double coverage. By the time the ball got there, Matt Darby had uh, shaken up Nelson because it was Matt who blitzed from the outside, and then Henley came back to help double team on the receiver. Well, take a look at the end of the play. It's an opportunity for somebody to make a big play. Eric Turner is the highest and knocks it away from Mertens. A nice play by Turner, just a sophomore. That's an out, outstanding athletes in that secondary for UCLA. Second down and 10. Pitch it outside, that's Lawson, and the Bruins cover him like a blanket. Lawson on the play of a couple of yards. Chance Johnson, number seven, leading that defendi defensive play. It's Chance Johnson reads it inside and then avoids the block. Usually on a defensive play, every man has one man assigned to block him. If you can beat that man, you usually have a free run to the football. The end of the quarter coming up. They won't take a snap here. So we played three quarters at Austin Stadium in Eugene, Oregon. UCLA 10, the Oregon Ducks 3. 34 yards out, puts LSU in front 19-18. As time expired, Philip Doyle missed from 54 yards out for Alabama. LSU and Georgia tied at 5-1 atop the SEC. Keith? Big win there for Mike Archer. That was in Tuscaloosa, too. All right. 
Oregon's football, third down and 12 at the UCLA 27-yard line. We go to the final quarter with UCLA leading in a defensive struggle, 10 to 3. Give it to Lattenberry, and Berry runs right into the center of the field, and that's probably going to set up a field goal try on fourth down. Keaton made the stop for UCLA. The Bruins only had two down linemen on the field for this defensive play. They had five linebackers out there. Here's the touchdown. The only touchdown of the ball game scored in the third quarter as uh, Keating made the catch in the corner of the end zone from uh, Troy Aikman. Now this is a 43-yard try by Kirk Dennis. Dennis has kicked one today from 23. Snap was high, but the hole looked pretty good, and it's good. Just squeezed it over. Just got it over. So 14-15 to play. Oregon now with two field goals, trails by four. The Honda Scholar Athlete of the Week is proudly sponsored by Honda. This week's award goes to John Jackson, the junior flanker from Southern California. In last week's USC 41-20 win over Oregon State, John had three receptions, 42 yards, and Honda will present a check for $2,000 to General Scholarship Fund of the University of Southern California. John's major, business. Grade point, 3.2. Not a bad baseball player, too. Bob Brothers holding. See that snap come back from Gary Robertson just high. Good job by Brothers to get it down. And Dennis just barely got it over. There's a little wind in his face. All right, the kickoff. Gets up high, and the wind will hold it up. And coming up to get it, Sean Wills. And I mean, there is a first-class collision when that tackle was made by Andy Connor. Lights out. That was as good a hit as you're going to see. Wills, just a freshman, true freshman this year, has done some, some nice things for UCLA running the football. So UCLA now leading 10 to 6. Has the ball at their own 28. First down. Little pressure here on the Oregon defense. Aikman pitches to Brian Brown. And Brown is brought down by number 21, Tom Kalmeyer, who has played a very good football game for the Oregon Ducks at his free safety position. He's been involved a lot today. He certainly has. A big hitter. Kalmar is second on the team in tackles from his free safety position. But there was a pickup of about three yards. That's his 13th tackle of the day by Kalmar. You're interested in such numbers. Here goes Brown again. He's going to have a first down, and he's still going. He's gone. There are no flags. Touchdown, Bruin. Well, there aren't that many Bruin fans here, and there's no Bruin band, and they're not making much noise. So let's look at the replay play and a great effort by Brian Brown. Cornish up inside. Zeno is 79. Page is 76. Big block there by Keating, too. And... Uh, Brian Brown, who missed the first four or five ball games this year with a hamstring problem, certainly doesn't have it any longer. He went to the same high school as Gaston Green, the outstanding running back who graduated last year from UCLA. It's a 68-yard sprint. Velasco is in. The snap goes through the hands of the holder, Maggio. He's running around looking for some help. Now throws it. And it's incomplete, it hit the ground. And so the extra point try goes awry. And just that quickly, the Bruins bounce out to an even bigger lead of 10 points. Kick off as soon as they can get the ball back on the feet. We've been very 
very lucky to uh, miss the rain today because there's a big storm hanging not far away. This is with the wind. Two-yard line, Oldham. Just barely in the neighborhood of the 20. Let's go back to the touchdown, Keith. Watch the center, Cornish, Zeno. All these guys are going to block down. Meyer, number 71, is going to come and get a nice block, as will Arbuckle. He's going to make a, a it's not going to be a great hole. And now watch as you see, you got to pick. All right, I find my way through. Sometimes they aren't real wide holes, but he found his way through, and Brian Brown is gone. Yeah, he was in his full sprinter strut by the time he got to the 10-yard line. He loved it, didn't he? Yeah, he used that. All right, Pete Nelson back. Throws intended for Obi, incomplete. Had him out there, but he missed it. Go back and take another look at the block. Here's uh, Kozak, number 49. Now, Marr, 71 right there, is going to stop his penetration. That's 46, Ali, that gives himself up. That is the one man that was not blocked. It's the linebacker that's filling in for Mark Kearns, who was injured last week of the leading tackler, and uh, all smiles on the UCLA sideline. Handed off inside, Lattenberry, the fullback, taken around trying to find some running room, and he is finally shirt-tailed and brought down by Eric Smith, number 98. And Latten's going to lose a little on that play. He almost broke out of there and got to the open side of the field. Almost. Smith is a veteran player in his fifth year at UCLA. He had back surgery last year. The year before that, he had 11 sacks in 1986. He and the other outside linebacker, Carnell Lake, have 50 career sacks between them. Third and 12. Time becoming precious now for Oregon. UCLA's got the two down linemen and linebackers and DBs in there now. The pressure on Nelson down the middle. Great catch by Obi. Henley brought him down. What a terrific effort by the Oregon Whiteout. Take a look at the pass protection. Keaton is 55 and Lodi's 94, but they don't get close. Coming from the left side across for Nelson, and a nice catch. And first down at the 35. Set up the screen. That's Lavelle back in the game. Had his ankle retaped. Dives across, close to at least, the 45 of UCLA. So the Ducks make the screen work. Well now, Rich Brooks and his Ducks are beginning to open up a little bit. It was a screen, but it was a little bit uh, shade different than most screens. Gotta look for some big plays now. 11 minutes to go in the ball game. Nelson pumps it. Lobs it up for OB and it is too far. He had double coverage. Going back with him, Eric Turner and Daryl Henley. The man that almost came open down the middle was the tight end Mertens, but I don't know that Nelson ever saw it. Uh, he, he was open, as you, as you mentioned. I think the pump pulled the safety over on the uh, outside man, and Mertens did get down the field. Take a look here. Mertens is going to open up as both of these men are going to jump on the outside receiver. Mertens came open. It's not the way we practiced it. <laughs> Second down and ten. Now Mertens gets it, but it's only good for three or four yards. Chance Johnson was right there. Tonight, Mike Connors hosts an ABC special involving the crimes of the century. And then Robert Conrad is a cop framed for murder in the all-new police story. Tonight on ABC. It 
is third down. They need six. Darby coming passes away intended for the tight end Merton. Bad choice of receiver there because he had no chance. If he'd have caught it, he wouldn't have had the first down. Well, UCLA, we talked about how good Oregon's defensive secondary is. UCLA blitzes. You see Smith, 98, coming. There's another man, number 43, Darby from the outside. He didn't have everybody blocked. He knew it. There was confusion, and he just threw it away and was lucky not to get it picked off. And the Milburn is in the fight. That is called the old silo, but it takes an Oregon bounce. He kicked that thing about 15 yards and it rolled another 20. The silo, huh? <laughs> the silo. The old silo shot, 10-34 to go in a ball game. The Bruins by 10. We help protect your plans and dreams. Our agents are the key. Together we make America work, we're USF and G. From the mountains, ledge to the ocean's edge, we ensure you every day. We protect what America's made of, we cover the USA. It's just like checkers. It's it's triple jump. It's boom, boom, boom. You make yeah. the right choices, you get to the it's prize. You. One of those prizes is Pontiac Grand Prix. I got a winner here. I don't believe him. <laughs> yes! Yeah. 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 Millions of people are winning big at Burger King. Betty McCoy won a Pontiac Grand Prix. Robin Fortune won a Carnival Cruise. And Larry Wilson won $10,000. Second down and two. And Nelson. Back to throw. Goes deep. Obi there. It is incomplete. Penalty flag. Hold the phone. Double coverage. Henley and Turner were back there covering Obi. It's a 15-yard penalty on pass interference by the defense, and that's the way it's going to go. Henley is protesting vigorously, and you have to be careful. You might add another 15 to it. I think it was interference from what I saw. Henley made more of an effort to go for the ball than did the receiver. Henley number two. Both of them are looking back, seeing the football. Henley goes up. That is not pass interference at all. Henley has more of a chance to catch it than the receiver did. Henley was in the air before the receiver. That's just a that's just a poor call. I think the fact that he wrapped his arm around the front of his face might have uh, given uh, the impression. Well, he was in but, the air first, though. And he was the only one that had his hands on the ball. He was in the air first, had his right hand going for the ball, and his left arm down on the receiver. And the ball comes down with a 15-yard penalty the first down. On the UCLA 40-yard line, Nelson tripped that ball off. Here comes the end around. That is Obi. Obi is inside the 30 and down to the Bruins 27. Eric Turner brought it down. A nice play by Turner. He hadn't have made that tackle. Let's go back and take a look at the interference on Henley number two. They both look back and see the ball. Obi number 82 is going to jump later. Now every, each man has a right to the football. Maybe he had his arm. Maybe that's why Obi didn't run, jump too high because Darrell had his hands on his shoulder. Well, no, I don't. Uh, I don't know. I, I like uh, the man. The defensive man's got just as much right as the offensive man. This is Barry. Barry is whacked down. He might not have even made the line of scrimmage with that effort. And it was Big Jim Waller, the nose guard, that just nailed him down right there. UCLA is leading by 10 points, 16 to 6. With six minutes, 10 seconds to play in the ball game. There's another shot of it. Henley was in the air first. He has his right arm up for the ball. His left arm is down on the man, but that is not interference. He's going for the football. At least the way I see it, I'm an offensive guy. <laughs> you certainly are. Uh, another quarterback. 
Arjun, the 4-0 board, you get down there and beat up on defense, and you just don't help them at all. This is underneath to the tight end, Mertens, and Mertens took a hard, hard lick for Chance Johnson, and he slid, trying to keep his balance. Johnson really hit him hard, and he finally fell down. Well, he gets his forward, forward momentum. He'll be fourth down. Yep. Waller's on the bench right now. And that puts UCLA back. We've seen this two or three times in the ballgame where they've only had uh, two down linemen in there. That's the linebackers and defensive back. And on third and long, Nelson dancing around, throws deep in the crowd and lost it. It is intercepted by Eric Turner. Second interception of the ball game by the UCLA Bruins. And that one may have done it for UCLA. You got 5.04 to play in the ball game. Bruins are leading the Ducks 16 to 6. There's OB 82 going up the field. Poor throw. There were men on either side. Henley's on one side. Turner gets up and goes for the ball, makes the interception the way you should do it. Quarterback had to throw the ball. He didn't have a lot of time to wait. You look at uh, Nelson. Yeah, but he threw it into a committee of group. He did. The inside, there was a spot. Two receivers on the same side. The inside man was going deep to the corner. was double covered, and the outside man was coming underneath. He was wide open. What a pick up the first down. All right, you've got Moore and Farr on the same side, spreading the field, and the handoff goes to Brian Brown, and Brown doesn't get much. And Matt Brock locks him down, and the clock continues to tick away at 4.50 to play in the game. Well, with all that storm they've got, the streets will be clean for the New York City Marathon tomorrow. But the question is, is the storm going to leave, or is it going to hang around? Clean out all the air and everything else. It'll be a good day if the storm moves up and let some 23,000 of them have at it. On the streets of New York City, and we'll have it for you on ABC Sports tomorrow morning. Aikman turns and gives to Brown again, and Brian to the 14. And it brings up third down. And good long five, close to six. Michigan now pulling away from Minnesota, and Arizona has tied it for the Huskies. Washington State and Stanford. Cougars, who had the big win against the Bruins last week, leading by three in the fourth quarter at Stanford. That's a run and shoot against Dennis Erickson's offense. I'm surprised they don't have more points. Yeah. Third down and a good five. out of the pocket, running around. He's going to pick up the first down as he gets to the 27-yard line. He's done that about five times today. And each time, he has picked up the first down. So the Bruins, the Bruins uh, will keep it for four more times. Well, we got picture, but the audio's bad, and I can't help it because I'm in Eugene, Oregon. <laughs> and the, and the sound and the videos coming out of New York were storming, right? Yeah, I guess so. I don't know. On first down. You start apologizing for Mother Nature, you're in a futile activity, aren't you? Yeah. Some of the crowd now starting to leave Austin Stadium. As they feel the, with the time remaining of three minutes and ten seconds and a ten-point deficit is perhaps too big a mountain unless they get some big luck. Penalty flag against the Bruins procedure. And that backs them up five. So it'll be first down and 15. You know, when these two teams get together, there's really no home field advantage, especially for the Oregon Ducks here in Eugene. The last time the Ducks one in Oregon was 31 years ago, in 1957, and that wasn't in, in this city or stadium. It was in Portland when they were playing a game up there. They beat UCLA. Timeouts remaining. Bruins have two. Oregon one. Ducks right now show a five-man front, and the 
sixth man comes to the outside. That's the cornerback, Brett Young. Young got a hold of him. But Brown is a pretty tough customer, and he makes a little bit on the play. Andre Williams, Peter Redman. Two thousand five hundred nine, the eighth, ninth largest crowd to see a game in the stadium since it opened in '67. And for the Bruins, second down at about fourteen. Brown taken down at the twenty-five, and it'll be third and twelve. For Oregon, this is their last home game. They go on the road next week, play Arizona at Tucson, and UCLA will go home against Stanford for their homecoming. And then, the big one. November 19, USC at the Rose Bowl. And we'll have it for you here on ABC Sports. Page 76, Zeno is 79, Marr 71, and Brock, number 92, slides off the block to make the tackle. Brown, 16 carries, 102 yards, 68 of that on one play. And we're just inside two minutes to go in a ball game. Game, UCLA ball, they lead 16 to 6. The big play of the ball game was a 68-yard sprint. And he ran through traffic to get loose by Brian Brown and sort of opened up the game for the Bruins. Came in the late in the third quarter. Here's another big factor in this ball game, and that's Troy running outside the pocket. That time, the Ducks pursued him and uh, bring him down for a loss, and that's going to bring in the UCLA kicking team. And time called at 1.44 to play in the game. All right, fourth down. Bruins will put it away. OB is deep, back at the Oregon 40. Barkey, got a lot of kicking today. OB can bring it back. Yes, he can. Got some pressure on it, but he got it out. OB, penalty flag. He's back on the UCLA side of the field to about the 43. Let's see what Gordon Reese says about the flag. Flipping against Oregon. Ooh, that's a tough call. So you know the ball's got to fly around here now, and if they're Oregon's to have any kind of a chance at all, they've got to score quick and then get a break. The Ducks are strong defensively. They also have good special teams. They lead the conference in kickoff returns and are second in putt returns. The offense has been a little down. But if you're going to uh, pick and choose, I'd, I'd pick a strong defense first and good kicking game second, a good ground game third, and then worry about throwing the football. Well, it's the old population factor that impacts the schools in the Northwest. They have to go outside. They go to California. There are 42 Californians on this Oregon team. There are probably about five players away maybe from even winning a championship. Here's the sideline pattern. The ball is caught by Lattenberry. If somebody's going to get a face mask call here, Barry is out of bounds, stopping the clock, and going to attack on either 5 or 15, depending on how they see it. So somebody clearly had a hold of his face mask. You know, this is just going to drive Terry Donahue and his uh, coaches crazy. Because in their minds, this ball game isn't over yet, and it isn't. I mean, uh touchdown an onside kick and who knows that's right holding offense grabbing the face mask defense penalties offset this will replay the down i didn't see the holding but i saw the face mask and so they're going to replay the down he was relieved that there was a holding offensively that's going to offset that he had 50 yards of penalties in the first half alone he hadn't been happy all day. <laughs> well, he officiated. So it's still first and ten. I tell you what, 
Nelson better get a little more zip on that ball because you can't lay it up there like that. Coming across is Sam Archer. Archer gets out of bounds. And Sam will have it out at the 48, roughly. And that's four yards short of the first down. Picked up six and used up a little time. Six seconds, 123 left. Of course, the Bruins are covering deep. They're playing center field now. Yeah, if he's throwing anything over the top of him, somebody's going to get shot. Yes. <laughs> Marcus and Eric. He's open. Yes, he is. Archer, get out of bounds, Sam. And he finally does. Down at the 35. Of UCLA. That's 115. Play the game. Archer is a guy that was redshirted last year. He's a senior this year. He had so many good receivers last year that Brooks asked him to redshirt, and he did. Came back this year as a senior, and his, the coaches love it. Nelson on first down. Throws short. Ball intended for Obi on the wide side of the field. It'll bring up second down, showing 11 seconds more than a minute. 11. 16 to 6. Oregon needs a touchdown. And a big break to have any hope. Bring it out. Gonna stay with it. They rule it as a forward pass. That was close. Yes, it was close. That is a pass that you cannot... Real close. You cannot afford to have incomplete. It was a, a short little screen pass. There was a problem. He had to throw it over a defensive man. But when you have a, a pass that short, it's almost an extended handoff. You want to make sure that you don't miss any of those. All right, the big folks come out. The quick folks come in defensively for UCLA. And it's third down and ten. pass down the middle, caught and dropped by the tight end Merton. Didn't hold on. Now it's Archer, Sam Archer, 80. So Sam coming down the middle, got a hand on it, but couldn't pull it in. Sam's sort of lanky fellow. I'm trying to figure out whether he's a quick folk or a big folk. <laughs> he weighs 200. Well, he just flat dropped that. Yeah, he's, he had it. He had it right in his hands. Well, he's not on the big folk, quick folk team. It's a defense I was talking about. Oh. Look out there, there's five, what, five linebackers? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're, you're right. Four linebackers and five defensive backs. That pass is incomplete on fourth and ten. And the ball goes over to the UCLA Bruins. And this game is history. 57 seconds to play. And now the crowd really starts to pour out of Watson Stadium. And the UCLA Bruins will have come back on the road after their loss last week to Washington State. And the Bruins still roll along. Have Stanford next week, and then the big one with the Southern California Trojans. And they needed this win to even set up that match in a couple right. of weeks. Of course, they'd have to win next week also. Speaking of Southern California, we'll see the Trojans next week as they go to Tempe against Arizona State. And that snap will get the clock rolling. Todd Barry, our spotter. Dave Bernson, our statistician. Now all UCLA wants to do is snap it one more time and let the clock expire and the game will be over. And the Bruins will remain very much in the hunt for national honors, postseason bowl, and certainly they're in the conference race game on the 12th everybody thinks could be the ultimate decider but you better not take a nap between now and the 19th so Stanford is left for UCLA and uh, Arizona State is left for Southern California and a 
timeout is called here by Oregon. But this issue is settled. You have 12 seconds to play. And all you need is one more step. UCLA Bruins ranked sixth in the nation coming into this ball game, and they certainly shouldn't slip any, considering what they have done today in Eugene, Oregon. And the UCLA Bruins defeat the Oregon Ducks by a score of 16 to 6. Brian Brown is the most valuable player for UCLA. 16 carries, 102 yards, and a big, big touchdown. Tom Kamar for Oregon. He had 14 tackles in the ball game from his defensive back position and played an outstanding ball game. $1,000 in the name of each player will go to the university's general scholarship fund at UCLA and at Oregon. So the Bruins roll along as they beat the Ducks 16 to 6. Tomorrow morning on ABC Sports and International Field of Support.